G'day. If you've been following my series about quadratic equations and parabolas, then this is the next step in the sequence. I've just completed uh, perhaps eight or ten videos explaining how to factorise quadratic equations. In this one, I'm going to explain how to complete their squares, and I may even clarify that in a subsequent video, and then I'll be looking at the quadratic formula. These three methods, factorising, completing the squares, and using the quadratic formula, are all variations, or all different methods of finding the x-intercepts of the parabola, that is the roots or the zeros of the quadratic equation. And it's good to be good at all three of these tools or skills. So how do we complete a square? Well, the first thing is to understand how to recognise one and what one looks like when it's worked out. So let's, on this side of the board, imagine we have a perfect square. That is something like x plus 3 squared, or x plus 7 squared, or even x minus uh, 8 squared. We'll do these very, very quickly. You know that squaring something means writing it out twice and multiplying the two factors together. So far, this is not difficult. This would be x minus 8, x minus 8. OK. Using your foil, or as I expressed it, the claw, uh, we, when multiplying, this x must multiply all of this. So we have x times x is x squared, and x times 3 is 3x. And then the 3 must multiply both these. We get 3x and 3 threes are 9. And I want you to notice that the 3x and the 3x add together to make 6x, and that's our perfect square. Notice this one. We'll speed up a little bit. x times x is x squared, plus 7x plus 7x, plus 49, and again, those two in the middle add together, and that's our perfect square. Last one, x squared, minus 8x, minus 8x, minus 8 times minus 8 is plus 64, and again we have two terms in the middle, and they're identical, they're both minus 8, so it's minus 16x plus 64. Now, I'm not talking about what we call non-monic quadratics at this stage. These are ones with numbers in front of the x. I'm just staying with the nice, simple ones. We call these monic. Monic quadratics. Mono, of course, means 1, and it just refers to the 1x squared that we have. So what do these have in common? Well, they all have an x squared in common, and you notice these have an x squared, so we're looking at this pattern. Notice that the number at the end is a perfect square. 3 3's are 9, 7 7's are 49, and 8 8's are 64, and that they're all positive. Why are they positive? Because whether you square a positive number like plus 7, or a negative like negative 8, you will get a positive answer, because negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. Two negatives make a positive. I heard of an English professor once who said in his English lecture that two negatives might make a positive, but two positives would never make a negative, even in English. To which some student up the back replied, yeah, right. I thought that was rather good. So, x squared at the beginning, perfect square at the end. And notice what we have in the middle. In every single occasion, we have the same term twice in the middle that have to be added together. So what we have in the middle is double something. And in fact, in the first one, if we multiply 3 by x and get 3x, we have 6x. 7 times x is 7x, double it is 14, and minus 8, or negative 8 times x, let's call it minus, or neg negative 8x, double it is negative 16x. 
So this number in the middle is double the number that's going to be in this inside the square, just because of the way that we get it twice when we're multiplying it out. Now, understanding that pattern, I'll, I'll stick with purple. Let's look at this. Now, you can see straight away, these are not perfect squares, and I hope you noticed that before. What we're going to do, though, however, is this. We're going to leave the x squared plus 10x alone and subtract 21 from both sides. Now, subtracting gets rid of it from here, but I end up with a negative 21 over that side. We just want it out of the road because it obviously was not the number we needed to make this into a perfect square. Now, I want you to notice this pattern looks so similar to these, doesn't it? The, the beginning parts. I also want you to notice these are even because we had to double something. So when I have an even number here, completing the square is very easy. Now, remember that was twice the number that's going to be inside the square? So to find the number that was inside originally, we have to halve this and it's going to be a 5. And therefore the number we wanted on the end is going to be 5 squared or 25. So if I add 25, that has completed that square. Now because I'm dealing with an equation, I must add 25 to the other side, just to keep the equation balanced. But this is the process of completing the square, and this is x plus 5 all squared. On this side, of course, I've got negative 21 plus 25 is 4, 25 take away 21 is 4. Now I haven't left a lot of room to work because I wanted to do two examples on the board, but we would now take the square root of both sides. Oh dear. One of these days I'm going to create a video about this. School textbooks do not do this well. When you take the square root of both sides, the square root of 4 is 2 using the square root sign. It is not plus or minus 2. But the square root of something squared is the absolute value of x plus 5. Now, if you're an advanced student, you understand that. Well and good. Uh, it leads to problems if you don't understand it thoroughly. But we're going to do it the way it's often done in schools, and that is we take the square root and we get x plus 5 is plus or minus 2. This is what we would get after a couple of lines of work if we did it properly. Subtract 5 from both sides, and you can see that one answer will be negative 5 plus 2, which would be negative 3. The other will be negative 5 minus 2, which would be negative 7. So here we go negative 3, negative 7. And those are the two answers, or the two roots, or zeros. Let's do it here, and we'll speed up just a little bit. Again, we don't want that 5 in there, so we move it to the other side of the equation, and we ask ourselves, what do we need to complete this square? So half of 6 is 3, that's the number inside the perfect square, so I, I now know that I'm looking at this. But to complete it, I do 3 squared, which is 9, and I've got to add 9 to both sides. That is now a completed square, and this is what it looks like when it's written as a factorised square. In fact, I just realised it's the one that I did up here. So there it is, x squared plus 6x plus 9 and we know that it's x plus 3 all squared. Now on this side, we have 9 subtract 5 is 4. Jeez, this is colourful. I'm changing colours ra almost randomly, I'm sorry. Take the square root of both sides. I'm going to use the shortcut. Square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. It hurts to say that. Uh, subtract 3 from both sides. 
and you can see that we have negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. This is a lovely little method. Now, to get fast and good at it, my recommendation is that you should try to get a whole lot of monic quadratics, these are ones with 1 in the front, and with even numbers here, and go through this process. And I would recommend that you do 15 or 20 of them. In fact, if you really want to get very fast and you've got a good variety going up to fairly large numbers, why not do 30? You should be able to do them uh, in about 20 seconds each. So in 10 minutes you could do 20 questions quite comfortably. And that would be a good investment in understanding the process well. Now, to help you do that, uh, I have a link below this video where you can download a workbook, an Excel workbook from my website that uh, has no macros or anything like that in it, so it's quite safe. It simply allows you to produce sheets of randomly generated uh, quadratic equations for you to practice on, so you don't have to go hunting around in books, and it has the answers on the uh, right hand side of the page, or at least the factorised form, and so you can check your answers quite readily. So where do we go from here? This is the first step. The second step is how to learn how to handle odd numbers here, which will unfortunately give us fractions. And the third step is to understand how to do it with a general uh, quadratic, which has numbers out the front, that is a non-monic. So we'll look at those in future videos. But in this one, that's how you uh, solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. And it's actually quite a nice method. Thank you for watching.